Welcome to Toronto Apologetics. My name is Tony Costa. Today we're going to be discussing Islam and we want to respond to this question, did Jews and Christians refer to God as Allah before Islam, a linguistic examination? This is going to be based on a very interesting post that was placed online by Dr. Marin Van Putin from Leiden University. Uh, Dr. Van Putin is a specialist in Quran textual criticism, historical linguistics, and the Semitic language. And so did Jews and Christians refer to God as Allah before Islam? And of course, before Islam, Muhammad was born around 570 AD and died in 632 AD. And so the question is, prior to Muhammad, in the pre-Islamic period, was the word Allah used for God by Jews and Christians? The Quran makes the claim in Surah 29, verse 46, and argue not with the people of the scripture, unless it be in a way that is better, save with such of them as do wrong, and say, we believe in that which has been revealed unto us and revealed unto you, our God and your God is one, and unto him we surrender. The Quran makes the claim here that Muslims are not to argue with the people of the scripture. People of the scripture or the people of the book is a Quranic designation for Jews and Christians. And here they are told not to argue with them unless it is in a way that is better, um, except with those who do wrong. But this is what they're supposed to say. They're supposed to say to Jews and Christians, we believe in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you. That is, we believe the Quran that was been, has been revealed to us, and we believe in the revelation given to you, namely in the Tarat, the law, and the Injil, the gospel. And then it claims, and your God, or our God rather, and your God is one, and unto him we surrender. And of course, the claim being made here is that the God that Muslims worship is the same God that Jews and Christians worship. And although the Quran makes that claim, uh, Christians uh, reject this idea that they worship the same God as the God of Islam. If you're interested in this, please look at my video uh, on the Unitarian and Trinitarian views, and which of those two views is compatible with scripture. Now, some think that the word Allah is a contraction of the definite article al, which is the Arabic word for the, and the noun ila, which means deity or God. And so some believe that the phrase al ila, that is the God, when it is shortened, you get the word Allah, which uh, some would say means the God. Now, this may very well, may it be possible that this may be the origin of, of how this word came about. But in the Quran, Allah is more used as a name for the deity. It's more used as a proper name for the deity. And while some English translations of the Quran will translate Allah as God, Many Muslim scholars believe that the word Allah is actually used as a proper name. Now, Allah is the name of God, and it's not really the, the way of saying the God in the Quran, which if that was the case, it would refer to him as Al-Ilah, the God. But it's clear from the Quran that the deity is referred to by the word Allah. Now, Arabic-speaking Jews and Christians call their God Allah today in their Bibles, and this has been the case since the medieval period. Now, it, it seems to be that since the coming of Islam and the emergence of Islam in the Arabian Peninsula, that it had a profound effect on not just Arab civilization, but on the language. And it's very possible that Jews and Christians uh, simply took that word, that term, Allah and incorporated it into their Bible translations. But the question we want to ask in this session is, how was Al-Idla and Allah used before Islam? Was Allah used for the God of Jews and Christians in the pre-Islamic period? And we need to also ask the question, how was the word Al-Idla used, the word that means the God or the deity, how was that word used? Now, due to Arabic inscriptions that have been discovered, Arabic inscriptions that predate Islam, 
Uh, in recent years, a number of Christian Arabic inscriptions from before Islam have been discovered. And whenever they invoke or, or they address God, he has a single name and it is not Allah, interestingly. Instead, these Christian inscriptions, in these Christian inscriptions, they consistently call him Al-Ilah, that is, the God. Not Allah, but Al-Ilah, the God. In Christian Arabic inscriptions that have been found so far, as we know, there is not a single example where a Christian calls their God Allah. They always address God as Al-Ilah, the God. Now, why is this? Why is this the case? It's possible because Al-Ilah in Arabic, the God, is the Arab equivalent of the Greek Hatheos, which also means the God. And so in the Greek New Testament, the New Testament was originally written in Greek. In the Greek New Testament, one of the ways that the one true God is designated is by using the definite article Ho and the noun, the noun in the nominative case, Theos. And so Ho Theos means the God. And it would appear to be that when Christianity came into Arabia, according to the New Testament in the book of Acts chapter 2, we are told that there were Arabs present on the day of Pentecost. And if these Arabs had taken their newly found Christian faith into Arabia, then it would probably explain why they preferred to use the term Al-Ilah, the God, so that it corresponds with the Greek Hatheos that is prevalent in the Greek New Testament. So an early Christian Arabic graffito mentioning Yazid the king from the 6th to the 7th century AD has been discovered in Qasr Burku in northeastern Jordan. Now, what is interesting about this rock inscription is that we know it's Christian. If you just notice here at the top inscription, there is a cross. Uh, no Muslim would place a cross in one of their inscriptions, uh, especially if it's the Quran. But notice there's a cross here. And this would indicate that this was a, a Christian that uh, inscribed these in that inscribed these letters into this rock. And it dates to the sixth uh, to the seventh century, the sixth to the seventh century, which would place this either in the 500s or 600s AD. And if it is the sixth century, if it's the early sixth century, this, this would place it before Muhammad. But what is interesting here is that written in this inscription uh, is a reference here uh, where it calls on uh, the God, uh, Al Ilah. It calls on the God to remember uh, Yazid al-Malik, this king who would have probably ruled at that time period. And here is a translation of the first line. Notice the cross there. Uh, remember, uh, Arabic, uh, like Hebrew, is read from right to left, right to left. And so here, of course, in the English translation, we, we have it from left to right in English. And so what appears on the top uh, line is the cross, as we mentioned, and uh, it says, may God be mindful of, uh, but in Arabic, it's Bakara al-Illa, uh, may the God be mindful of. So you notice the word al-Illa appears there, uh, and the verb uh, to be mindful of. And so it's calling on the God, remember this is a Christian Arabic inscription, and they refer to the deity as al Ila, and they're calling on the God, the one true God, to be mindful of Yazid al-Malik, that is Yazid al-Malik, Yazid the king. And so uh, you'll notice here that these Christians do not address the deity as Allah, but rather as al Ila. So in the case of Allah, the name it does exist before Islam, and, and it is attested with, with some frequency. Now, you need to remember that according to Islamic tradition, Muhammad's own father was called Abdullah, which means servant or slave of Allah, which suggests that the name Allah was around. 
Uh, you also need to remember that Muhammad's own father was a pagan. And there's Islamic tradition even stating that Muhammad was told not to pray for his father's, uh, for forgiveness for his father because he had died as an idolater and as a pagan. But yet uh, he bore the name uh, Allah in his name as Abdullah. Therefore, Allah uh, was a deity of sorts that the Arabs recognize. We also know that the name Allah is found among uh, Nevitian Arabs, uh, even having that name contained in their own names. And so just like Abdullah um, is a name containing uh, the divine name, uh, in English we refer to this as theophoric names, but uh, we can refer to this as allophoric names, that is names that bear the name of Allah, like Abdullah. Now, the Nabataean Arabs also had different gods. Allah was not the only god. Allah was one of many gods. And so the Nabataean Arabs uh, also, uh, in their names, uh, they would have names like Abdu Manoti. And Abdu Manoti means servant or slave of Manat. And who was Manat? Well, Manat was one of the Arabic goddesses. Uh, she was also one of the daughters of Islam, according to uh, Surah 53 verses 19 uh, to 20, she's also referred to as a daughter of Allah. And she was also worshipped by the pagan Arabs. And so Allah seems to find its, its provenance, its place uh, within pagan Arabia. Another goddess that uh, is also important in, in understanding our question of today is Allah. And Alat was one of the Arabian goddesses who, like Manat, was also believed to be a daughter of Allah. And she's mentioned in Surah 53, verse 19 of the Quran. Now, in pagan Arabian sources, um, Alat is actually invoked far more than Allah. And she's actually invoked or prayed to 36 times more often than Allah. And so it would seem that Alat has actually more prominence among the pagan Arabs than Allah did by the very fact that she was more frequently addressed in prayer. And this relative lack of popularity um, with Allah does not, it doesn't really suggest that Allah was in any way a central figure in the pantheon, because if he was, then uh, there would be uh, prayers and, and invocations to Allah would be far more plentiful. So in the Quran, Surah 53, verses 19 to 22, we have this. Have you thought upon Allah and Al-Uzza and Manat, the third, the other? Are yours the males and his the females? That indeed were an unfair division. So here in the Quran, it actually mentions these three daughters of Allah, Allah, Al-Uzza, and Manat. And the Quran here actually is saying to the pagan Arabs, because they valued male children and they rejected and did not wish for female uh, children, daughters, the Quran goes on to say, are yours the males and his the females? Should you have sons and Allah just has daughters? That indeed were an unfair division. And incidentally, this is the passage in the Quran that gave rise to the controversial topic called the Satanic Verses. So here's the Quran actually referring to these daughters of Allah. Uh, which again is, is very interesting because it shows that the Quran is aware of these daughters and it's aware that these daughters are also uh, worshipped by the pagan Arabs and are highly valued. And so the Quran bears witness to this. And so the idea that, the very idea that the God of Islam who is is believed to be Allah who was worshipped by the pagans and had three daughters, um, to believe that this God is the same God as the God worshipped by Jews and Christians uh, is, is truly an incredible feat uh, when you think of it. And so the question again we come back to is, did the Christian Arabic speakers refer to God as Allah or did they refer to God as simply the God? Uh, sixth century Christian Arabic speakers uh, do not call their God Allah, but rather Al-Ilah. Pagan Arabic speakers around the first century BC to the first century AD, I want you to notice first century BC, uh, this is before Christianity, so this would be uh, before the time of Jesus, but also into the first century when Jesus was uh, 
uh, about his ministry in, in the land of Israel, um, they know of a minor deity in their pantheon named Allah. So Allah is known. It's not that he's not known, but he's simply a minor deity. He's just one deity among many. So there's, there isn't this idea of Allah being unique uh, in this time period. And it is unclear that Arabic speakers equated him with the God of the Bible, at least the God revealed in the Old Testament with Yahweh. There's uh, no indication that they thought that he was the same God. And so is the Quran the first one to associate the name Allah with a monotheistic deity? Well, in recent years, more and more monotheistic Arabic inscriptions, probably from the 6th century, have been showing up around the Hijaz that seem to invoke Allah. And so there may have been some Arabs that, that were of the opinion that Allah was, was unique and that, and that he was the only real God and so forth and so on. But um, on an equal balance, the same could be said for other uh, Arabs who believe that Allah was simply just one among many others. And so in summary, uh, what can we deduce from this study? Uh, number one, Allah might come from al Ilah, the God, but it is not the same as saying the God. Rather, Allah is being used as a name in the Quran. Number two, Christians before Islam called God al Ilah, the God to correspond with the Greek Hotheos, the God that we find in the Greek New Testament. And so it is understandable why Christians would refer to the one true God as the God, the only God, because this is also the way in which God is referred to in the New Testament in its original Greek language. Number three, pagans around the first century, that is the time of Jesus, know a pagan God called Allah. And so Allah here is still considered by these pagans as one of their gods. And that is why in the Quran, when the Quran speaks to its hearers or when Muhammad speaks to his audience, you will notice Muhammad never has to define who Allah is. It is a given that the hearers know about Allah and that they are familiar with him. And number four, at some point before Islam, Al-Ilah and Allah began to merge into one. That is, they, it, it became combined into one. And so I trust that this study has uh, been interesting and uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we encourage you to subscribe to the channel and also to like the video. And you, uh, if you do subscribe, you will receive uh, further updates on many videos like this that will be made available. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care, and God bless you.